So today we've got the IntelliFlow and we are gonna dive into some programming. As you can see, the IntelliFlow has this nice little weather resistant door so the screen can stay protected. We always recommend when you're done uh, programming these or turning things on or pretty much touching this keypad in general, close your door, save the life, because these things are mighty expensive. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open up our cover and we're just gonna go ahead and dive into the programming. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is set the date and time on these things. So the, the cool part with the date and time um, with these IntelliFlows now is that they have an extremely long battery backup and what it is, is strictly for the date and time. So say you lose power for two days, three days, seven days, the time will actually stay. So if you see up here in the top right corner, it says 12.02 a.m. Uh, so we just turned this thing on two minutes ago and this is factory settings. So what we wanna do is change that to where it's gonna save the time to where if you do get a power outage and power does turn back on, say it turns back on at 6.15 a.m. So at 6.15 a.m. it's gonna read whatever schedules we have in there and it's gonna power into whatever schedule you have. So first things first, what you're gonna to wanna to do is press menu and then you're gonna to wanna to go to settings. So you're gonna press the select button in the middle and see how the first option is date and time. You're gonna press select. So what you're going to do is see how it says 0101 of 2010. I'm going to press select to get into that menu again. So right now what I'm going to do is change to January 3rd of 2020. And then see how it says save. So if, in, in telephones are very infamous of the select and save button getting confused. So watch what happens if I press select again. Key error. So it wants me to press that save button. So I'm going to press save. So now my date is in there. So now what I wanna do is press the up button. As you can see, date and time, it has the options at the very, very top to go to a different menu. So I wanna press up. So this is what it is. I can do AM, PM, which I can change my hour format. So if you're a military man or a woman, you can go to 24 hour date and time. But we're gonna stick it to AM, PM. And again, save button to save. I'm gonna go up again to my time. So what I wanna do is adjust this to my current time of day. So what I'm gonna do now See how if I go down, it goes to p.m. and goes up to a.m.? So what I want to do is make it to 1 o'clock p.m. Right now it's 1.30 p.m. If you see, I press arrow over, and that's how I get back and forth from every single mini menu. So now I'm going to go to 1.30 p.m. Again, I don't want to press select. I want to press save. So that is currently all three of the date and time options that I can do. So now what I wanna do is I wanna press menu again to back out of there, and now everything is saved. So that's how you set the date and time on IntelliFlow. So next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go back into settings menu, and I'm gonna go up. So that we have alarm log, device number, min and max settings, date and time. This is our settings menu. So the next one I'm gonna do is kinda of go over the alarm log. So if you ever have an alarm issue, if it says something's wrong, you can actually go into the alarm log and it tells you the date and time of whatever alarm happened. So if you see power outage at this time, it wasn't set yet, so it tells me the wrong one. And then I only have one log, so. Um, so yeah, that tells you kind of what happened. And honestly, a technician's gonna look at this if you guys ever have any issues, so he can read what kind of where to diagnose first. So then device number. So if, if you have an IntelliFlow or multiple IntelliFlows with automation and you want to um, put them all on say an IntelliCenter or an Easy Touch or something like that. So you want to change the device numbers from one through four, one through, th one through eight, I think you can do now. So what I'm going to do is select into here and change my pump address. So what I have is a pump address and I can click select Yeah, so I can go all the way up to I think 32 now pumps on a system with the IntelliCenter, which is 16, and I think they like you can do another 16 uh, with the IntelliCenter, but most traditional like the IntelliTouches I want to say are about 16 max, and Easy Touch might be a four pump max. Uh, don't quote me because I'm kind of guessing right now. So say this is our water feature pump, and I want to make this uh, pump number two. So what I'm going to do is click save. So now I'll have a filtration pump, which would be one, and this would be two, so that way you can back program everything on your automation center of which pump actually controls which uh, auxiliary. So it's kind of nice that you can actually have multiple pumps on one system independently talking to the automation center. So now I'm gonna go back 
So now again, I'm gonna go up to min and max settings. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust the min and max settings in the settings menu. So let's go back again. So again, if I go to menu, settings, select, I wanna go up to min and max, and then I'm gonna press select. So this is how you can kind of change the, the low and maximum extreme parameters of the pump. So if you don't want this pump to ever go below, say, 1,000 RPMs, I'm gonna change this to 1,000. So that way nobody can actually make this thing go below 1,000. I've never really seen people adjust the minimum settings before. It's usually only the maximum settings, but here, remember, the save button here is how you save it. So now I'm gonna go up to max. So what I'm gonna do now is press select. So say this is a 3450 on a three horsepower pump is probably way too much for anybody to put on like a single bullet cartridge system, you know? So you don't want somebody to max this thing out and blow something up or do something extreme. So now this is how you can lock anybody, including your pool guy out from going too aggressively um, with the RPMs on this pump. So, so now I'm gonna max that at 3000 RPMs and I'm gonna click save. So now what we just did is we have a minimum setting of 1,000 and a maximum setting of 3,000. That way this pump can literally just stay inside those parameters at all time, no matter what anybody does or tries to force it to do, to where that way it's kind of bulletproof on your system. So every system is different. You just gotta make sure that um, it's tuned to what your pool requires. So then I'm gonna do, it's all saved. So now I can just click menu again. It takes me back to the settings menu. So I'll click set. So now, that's all of our settings. Pretty awesome. So let's press menu, press menu again, and then reset. Takes us back to the home page. So if you see me press four, it maxes out at 3000. So before, you didn't know this, but I had it at 3450. So even if I try to go higher, it won't let me, which is super cool. So now I'm gonna press menu. The next things we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the speeds one through eight. So I press menu, I go up to speeds one through eight. I'm gonna press select. So as you can see, it says one, two, three, and four. So a lot of industry professionals say, don't put schedules on speed one, two, three, and four. You're gonna wanna put them on speeds five, six, seven, or eight. Uh, that way you can have one, two, three, and four as say a quick speed if you want to, or a accessible speed, or an egg timer, or however you'd want to do it. So say like, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to speed five, okay? And I'm gonna click select. So see how it says disabled operation mode? I'm gonna, and obviously that's all I can do. So I'm gonna press select again, and now I'm gonna schedule it or disabled. So, Five, six, seven, eight is only scheduled or disabled, and that's it. So I'm gonna go to schedule and click save. And then now, if I go up, now I get another menu. So now I can have this <clears throat> turn on, turn off at whatever speed I want to. So let's just, for example, I'm gonna change this one for you from 12 o'clock a.m. or 12.01 a.m. save to stop. And then if I go down, this is the start time. So now what I'm gonna do is obviously you cannot have the start time and stop time the same thing, so that's why I kind of jumped over one. So I'm gonna press select. And I'm gonna have this thing start at 9 p.m. and save. So now I press down until I get to the RPMs. So now I can change the RPMs that I want this thing to run from that allotted time schedule. So now I'm gonna go up to 2,000 RPMs and save. So now, I press menu, oh, I press the wrong button. So what I wanna do is go back to speeds one through eight, go back to my five, select. So it's on schedule, press up. So my start time is nine, turns off at 12.01 a.m. and my RPMs are 2000. So now I'm gonna click the back button. So now I can go to speed six and do the same thing if I wanted to with a different, say a higher speed or a lower speed. You can do all these types of speeds in here and you have eight different types of speeds you can do this on. But however, I wanna show you what speeds one through four has the capability of doing. So I'm gonna do it on speed one right now. So what I'm gonna do is select on speed one. So there's manual mode, which is pretty much if I come over here to the pump, press one, press start, it turns on. Very straightforward. There's also 
schedule mode, which is what I just showed you on how to set a schedule for speed number five. And then there's also egg timer. That's what I'm gonna show you right now, is how to adjust egg timer on your pool pump. And egg timer is pretty straightforward. So say you have a hot tub and you want this thing cranked up all the way for an hour. And you just want a quick little button to go one, start, it's cranked up for one hour. So we're gonna go to egg timer and press save. Now I'm gonna scroll down. What RPMs are on my egg timer at? Let's max it out. Save. So now I'm gonna go back. So I'm in my options. So now here's my egg timer options. Right now it's at 10 minutes. So it says hours, colon, minutes. So now I'm gonna press select. Say I want this thing at one hour even. So now my egg timer duration is one hour. I wanna save it. So now what I just did is pretty much I have an egg timer on speed one at 3000 RPMs for one hour. So then if I go all the way back home, press one, see how it says egg timer? If I press start, it's gonna turn on that speed. That's my priming speed. So it's gonna turn that speed on for one hour, then shut off. Egg timers are really cool there. They're really nice if you have certain auxiliaries that you only wanna run or for party modes or stuff like that. I usually recommend doing a couple speeds for egg timers, or if you wanted to keep your scheduled speeds at one and two, then egg timers at three and four. Uh, most pools, that's enough uh, because honestly, very far and few between pools require eight different speeds. Um, they just kind of put those on there to cover the basis of most swim pools out there because there are some higher end pools or some giant pools out there require different types of things. So the next thing we're gonna go is menu, therm mode. So if you see therm mode, what that is is it's pretty much a, a freeze protection and I believe the factory settings is set at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. So what I can do is change that so I can go up, but I cannot go down. So I don't like to call it freeze protection mode. They call it therm mode because honestly, some people geared out there to say, yeah, it's here to save your pool equipment if, you're, if there's a freeze. No, what they're doing is they're turning their motor on because they wanna save the motor. So they're trying to protect, thermally protect the actual motor. So if you get a 40 degree Fahrenheit day, it's going to, there's a sensor inside the drive here that's gonna turn the motor on and keep it on at whatever RPMs here are scheduled. And honestly, keep it low, it's not a big deal. It's just slowly circulating the water. And that's what I would do is keep it at 1000 RPMs. I think that would work out great for therm mode. So again, therm mode is to protect the motor if it gets below 40 degrees. If for some reason you want that thing to go up to 50, 60, 70 degrees, which is kind of weird, but you can do it. You have the capabilities doing it here. So again, let's press menu again. Let's go to the next thing, which is priming. Priming is an interesting one. So we're gonna select into priming. See how it says enabled or disabled? So you can disable priming if you want to. I don't recommend it because priming the pool pump is a very important step of having a pool pump work properly. So keep it enabled. And then you can actually do a priming delay before it actually kicks into the speed that you want it to. So say you have a uh, 1700 RPM speed so like say speed two is 1700 RPMs, you turn it on, it's gonna prime for 20 seconds at 3000 RPMs. So what we're gonna do is I like to change that. I like my priming delay at least a minute. So I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna change this to one minute, 20 seconds and save. So now the priming range As you can see here, it does a fluctuation, which when we turn it on, I'll kind of show you. And once it senses full prime, it usually stops the prime sequence and just goes right into your, your speed. But again, I'll, uh, we'll dive into that in a little bit. And then max prime duration, which is 11 minutes, which is quite a long time. So again, if you don't get a good prime, if it senses error, it's gonna turn off and it's gonna error with a priming error code here, which I, I can actually show you right now because I have this thing hooked up to no water. So what we'll do is reset this and I'm gonna prime it right now for you and show you what happens. If we get a priming error. So 
just as alarm priming dry. That means you don't have any water in the pump, so you're gonna wanna fill that pump up to prime it up. So what I'll do is I'll reset it, and now I'm gonna go back into the menu, and then we're gonna move on to features. So features, there's timeout and quick clean. So you see timeout here, quick clean here. Quick clean is cool because if you see a storm coming, you just come out, press quick clean start, and it goes straight to a speed for exactly how long you want it to do. So what quick clean is, so let's dive into that. So quick clean at 3000 RPMs, I have it going for 10 minutes, which I think that's not enough. So usually a standard quick clean is between 30 minutes and an hour. So I'm gonna put it to an hour and save, go up, it's really that easy. So now if you come out to the pool and you click quick clean start, boom, it's gonna run for one hour at 3000 RPMs. So now let's go back to timeout. Timeout is what a lot of automation panels have to where if a pool guy comes, he's gonna to wanna to turn your system on for three hours. So three hours is definitely standard. Again, we can press select, go over, change it up, change it down. Standard is three hours for timeout. And then again, that's literally all it's gonna do. So if I press timeout, if I'm a pool guy, I'm gonna come here, press reset, press timeout. So now what I'm gonna do is I can turn on whatever speed I want to in timeout and it's gonna lock this whole programming out for three hours, which is really kind of cool because that way it can circulate whatever chemicals the pool guy adds. And it's kind of a cool little system. So now I'm kind of locked out myself. There we go. So yeah, again, timeout mode, it's gonna lock out all programming for three hours. Quick clean, it's gonna lock out, not really lock out, but just do a quick cycle for about an hour. So let's go ahead and back to the menu. Exterior control is if you have an automation device, but we, we're gonna dive into that in a different video. Speeds one through eight. So again, we're back to the main. We've just programmed this entire pump, which is pretty awesome. Pretty easy, very, very self-explanatory to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, and then for some reason, you end up having a pool pump that you inherited that you just wanna kinda wipe it start over and do a factory reset setting. So what I'm gonna show you now is this is how you factory reset a Pentair variable speed pool pump. So I'm gonna hold down one, two, three, four, and quickly let go. It's gonna say backdoor zero factory reset. I'm gonna press select, go to one, and then I'm gonna click save. See how it's still stuck on one? So when it's on this screen, you're gonna to wanna to kill the power. So what I'm gonna do is walk over and turn the breaker off. So now you're gonna get an alarm code. See how it's flashing right here? That means no power or some kind of alarm. So what we're gonna do is wait for the screen to go away. Keep in mind it says 1.45 p.m. I'm gonna show you how to tell if you did this process correctly or not. So now what I'm gonna do is once we have no power, we're gonna turn the power back on. See, it's got a delay now, which that's a good sign. Now we're back at 12 a.m. We have successfully wiped all the programming of this IntelliFlow. So again, I'm Jacob with the Pool Supply. Thanks again for tuning in. This is how you program an IntelliFlow variable speed pool pump from, from front to back. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe today. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Subscribe today if you haven't subscribed. Check out the links below and we got a lot more content coming your way. Thank you.